Welcome to the Learn the Basics of Blue Hill Universal webinar. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Nick Erickson, your host for this webinar. Today I'm joined by Elaine Gordonoff, product manager for all of Instron's static testing software, including one you're gonna hear about today, Blue Hill Universal. Elaine has worked with Instron for over eight years and before product management, she started off as one of our application engineers before taking on the role of market manager for our biomedical industries. Um, so not only is Elaine an expert Blue Hill Universal user, she's also got a ton of knowledge and insight into a wide variety of testing applications and industry standards. We're also joined by Dan Caesar, one of, the, one of our application engineers. He's going to be keeping an eye on questions while Elaine is presenting. So I wanna encourage you to send in any relevant questions that come to mind as we go along. We'll aim to address these at the end. So with that said, I'm gonna turn things over to Elaine. Thank you, Nick, um, for that introduction. As Nick mentioned, my name is Elaine Gordonal, and I am the product manager for Instron Static Software, which is Blue Hill Universal, as well as Trend Tracker Software. Um, so Instron's been hosting these weekly webinar series um, and what we've heard from our customers attending these is that people want to hear more about the basics of Blue Hill. So just really simple stuff like making test methods in Blue Hill Universal. Um, so that's one of the first things that we'll cover. We'll cover the test types within Blue Hill Universal, as well as building a method from scratch. Um, then what we would do is we are going to run a test. Um, using that method, we just built from scratch. Um, and then finally, I'll cover quick test, which is a test type within Blue Hill Universal and no method is needed. So with that, I'm gonna switch gears and jump right into Blue Hill Universal. Um, so I have Blue Hill Universal open on my screen here. Um, I have a souped up version of Blue Hill. Um, so you can see I have the analysis module. This is an additional module within Blue Hill software. So if you don't have that, that's completely okay. Um, every user will see test, method, as well as the admin screen. So let's jump in to creating a method. I'm gonna select the uh, method option. And on this screen, now I have two options. I can create a method, a new method from scratch, or I can edit an existing method. So let's focus on building a method from scratch. Blue Hill standard software comes with eight standard method templates. Users who purchase test profiler for more complex cyclic testing get an additional two method templates. So that's this tension test profiler method, um, as well as the compression test profiler method. Um, but for the purposes of focusing on the basics, let's just focus on the basic method templates, which is a tension method, compression, flex, a metals method, which that is almost the same as a tension method. However, you get two additional ramp rates. There's a tension creep relax, compression creep relax, flex creep relax, and finally peel tear friction. So these are all of the standard method templates that come with Blue Hill Universal. We could start a new method um, by selecting one of these. So I can select a tension method um, to start a tension method from scratch. We can also do that from the test screen. And when I build methods from scratch, I like doing it from the test screen because I like to see how my workspace layout looks. So I can click on test, and then we're presented with um, a few options here. I can run a test with an existing method, so a method that I already have. I could also uh, continue a sample file. So this would be a sample file that someone already started and now an operator or user wants to continue the sample file. Or I have this option again to create a new method. So I'm going to select that. And then here I'm presented again with the eight standard method templates. 
um, that we just reviewed. So you can see there are also some um, predefined method templates here. Um, these can be sorted by application type. So say I want to look at the biomedical um, method templates that are supplied with Google Universal. I could do that simply by filtering in this window. Um, so again, I want to just focus on the basics here. So I'm going to start with attention method. So by selecting attention method, a user is presented with a completely configurable template for attention testing. Bluehill is very powerful software presented in a flat user interface. And that interface is designed to allow users to start from the left of the screen and navigate to the right. Selecting each window um, and completing the information that's applicable for that method. Again, Bluehill is completely configurable. So if I skip something while we build this method together, it's merely because I'm trying to focus on the basics. However, if I skip something that you have questions about, please ask during the Q&A section. So let's start um, on the sample tab. This section contains method information for the sample. A sample is a collection of individual specimens. Some users might call this a batch. So for example, um, say I use the terminology batch in my lab, and I want operators to enter a batch number before starting a test. So I can enter that um, within this screen. I'm going to choose a text input. Um, so right now it's set to just a default, um, but I can edit that. So by editing it, I can say um, this is where I want my operators to enter batch number. And now that field is updated. Um, I could say enter another parameter, maybe it's date. Maybe I want my users to enter um, the date when the batch was created. Um, so I can type that in, batch creation date, and close. So again, these are parameters that are associated with the sample. Um, and keep these in mind because we're going to add those to the workspace later as operator inputs. So let's move along to um, learn more about the specimen in the specimen section. So this is where information for the individual specimens is captured. Setting the specimen geometry is critical if your user requires a stress calculation. And this is because stress is force divided by cross-sectional area. If the geometry and specimen dimensions are set incorrectly in method creation, all stress values will be wrong later on. Um, so we can select different specimen geometries here. Um, there's a wide variety. I'm going to keep to rectangular. Um, and remember this, because um, we'll also add this later within the operator inputs when we get to the workspace. So next, let's move to measurements. Think of measurements as the physical measurements from transducers, like the load cell, displacement from the crosshead, and strain from an extensometer. For example, if we wanted to use an extensometer for this test, I would need to add a new measurement, um, a new physical measurement strain here. And then I would need to configure this measurement so that it aligns with the hardware. So say right now I have this strain device plugged into the strain one channel on my system, but I can also change that. Maybe it's plugged into strain two. Um, in this example, I'm not going to use an exensometer because um, I'm in demonstration mode and I'm not connected to an Instron system. So I'm just going to remove that um, and, and stay with the basics here. So anything in the uh, measurements tab, this has to be configured correctly before starting a test because this is associated with your raw data. Moving along, let's look at calculations. Calculations and configuring the results table in, blue, in a Bluehill method can be done during method creation, like we are doing now. However, these parameters can also be added later on 
um, during testing. And this allows for a lot of flexibility. For example, say you have existing test data, but you realize you now want to add a new result, um, you can easily do that here. So I'm gonna add um, a few results. I'll add um, break. So this is so we can see the results when the specimen breaks. Um, I'll also add a peak maximum. Um, so this will allow us to see the maximum force. So later on, we'll add results associated with these two calculations to the results table. So let's go to test control. Um, test control also is a section that has to be configured before your test starts because it's associated with things like test speed. So how fast your test is going to run um, as well as your data, um, data rate preferences. So I'm gonna focus on four tabs here, pre-test, test, end of test, as well as data. So let's go into pre-test. For most tensile and compression testing, a preload is recommended. A preload removes slack from a specimen or allows your test to start at the same point every time. Generally, um, with a preload, the preload speed should be set to half or less than half of your test speed. So say my test is going to be uh, 50 millimeters per minute or two inches per minute about, I'm going to set um, my preload speed fairly low. I'll choose 10 millimeters per minute. Um, as well as I need to set a preload, preload force. Um, so the preload, preload force should not exceed 10% of your maximum force during a test. So for this, I'm gonna just put a low um, preload. So what this means is at the start of my test, the Instron machine will move up at 10 millimeters a minute until it reaches 10 newtons. And that's when um, the next action will occur or the test will start. So I'm gonna also set up an auto balance here. Um, so what this does is this auto balance the tensile displacement after a preload. Auto balance should be used to balance tensile displacement after a preload. So it's recommended that if you have a preload, you also balance tensile displacement. That way, the x-axis on the graph always starts at the origin and is consistent for all specimens. Unless your application really requires it, um, we don't recommend balancing force because balancing force will offset or could offset your results. Um, so let's just think about this for a second. Um, so would you put a 10 pound weight on a scale, zero the scale, um, then step on the scale and claim you lost 10 pounds? No, you wouldn't do that. That doesn't make a lot of sense. And, and the same principle holds true um, <clears throat> with a preload, preload and auto balance. So we don't recommend balancing the force transducer at the start of your test un unless your application requires it. And, that, and that's why it is available here because some applications do require a force balance. Um, two applications that I can think of that require or could require a force balance is a peel test. Um, so Maybe you only want to measure the force um, to peel an adhesive, um, and as, as well as some component testing. And there's some component testing in um, the automotive industry, for example, that the test has to occur with, um, say, a 50-pound uh, load that can be balanced off, but that has to be on the, on the specimen um, to start the test. Um, so that's pretest. Pretest is really important. Um, for compression and, and, and tension testing. So moving along, let's look at this test speed. Um, this is much uh, simpler. Um, this is where you set the speed um, for your test. So I'm just gonna say 50 millimeters a minute. Um, you can also obviously change um, all of the units here with, um, per however you would like to con configure your method. Um, the end of test criteria. This is the criteria used for the software to recognize a break or when a test ends. Um, so we can configure that. Um, the, the default 
is a drop in a 40% drop in force, um, which is a measurement rate. Um, if this is confusing to you or you're finding that um, the default isn't working, you can always go directly in to the help. And the help is really great. Um, so we can click on end of test criteria and now I can see all of the different end of test parameters and pick the one that makes the most sense to me. So if I'm a little bit confused about the measurement rate, what does that actually mean? Um, so it seems like the test ends when the selected measurement drops by the sensitivity percentage within 100 milliseconds. So what I see here is that when I see when Blue Hill sees a 40% force drop in 100 milliseconds, um, that Blue Hill knows that the test should end, that the specimen broke. Um, so you can configure this to whatever makes sense um, for, for your method. So let's move along to data. Um, the default data rate is set <clears throat> to 20 milliseconds. So this is a data point is taken every 20 milliseconds. Um, I'm in demonstration mode, so I have a very large load cell. I believe I have a 600 kilonewton load cell. Um, so I have this time interval of 20 milliseconds, but I also have this force interval. And the default is, the default force interval is based on a percentage of the capacity of the load cell. Um, so I believe it's 0.25% of the capacity. I have a 600 kilonewton load cell, so that's why this value is so high. Um, so what this is saying is that a data point will be taken every 20 milliseconds and every 1500 newtons. And the reason why the default settings are like this is because <clears throat> some tests um, are very fast over the modulus period where we need to collect data, um, we need to have a higher data rate, um, where maybe um, we want the data point every 20 milliseconds. However, then through yield, um, maybe we can slow down the data rate a bit, um, and we want that to be based on um, an increase in force. So th th that's why there are these two settings. Um, but for example, if you had a 500 Newton load cell, um, this force interval would be 1.25 newtons because it's a percentage of the capacity of the load cell. Um, you can also override, override these settings. You can choose to do custom data rate settings, um, but the default works, I'd say, for 80% 80, 80 of our customers and most users um, don't need to check the data, change the data rate settings. Console, um, this is a more advanced section in the method. I'm going to skip over this or I won't go into too much detail, but I did want to point out that users can add or remove live displays. The live displays are up at the top. So this is measuring live displacement on your Instron machine, as well as the live force value. So say I also wanted to add time here, that updates the live displays. Maybe I want um, one of my results Maybe I want force that break to come up here. Um, so you can really customize your live displays within the console. And then when you save this method, anytime a different operator opens this method, um, those live displays will also be updated. So let's move on to the workspace. And the reason why I decided to build this method from scratch going through the test tab is because for me, I like to see how the workspace looks. So I can go right into tests right now, and this is my default workspace. I don't have any operator inputs. Um, you can see I have this results section here, but I didn't add any results yet, and I can have the, the graph. And I like building the workspace and being able to go back to um, sort of a, a dummy test method to see how, um, how my method is going to look when an operator opens it. So really the workspace is where everything comes together. Um, remember in the beginning when we added the sample text input and I said we'll add that as an operator input. So right now we're under operator inputs 
Um, again, just jumping back here, here's the operator inputs in my workspace. Jumping back to method, now I can go back and add um, that sample text input, and there it is. That's the one that we created, the batch number. I also added um, a sample date because I want my users to input that, input the batch number as well as the batch creation date. Um, I also thought it was important that my operators do measure the specimens and enter um, the specimen dimensions that are associated with the stress calculations. So I'm gonna have my operators enter thickness and width too. So I can navigate back to the test screen and I can see that I'm, I'm now configuring my operator inputs in the workspace. And this is the reason why I like to create methods um, using the test window so I can see I'm a very visual learner. And I, I think a lot of people are. So I think it's helpful to see when an operator opens your method, what they'll actually be seeing in the user interface. So let's now add results to our results table. So we configured our measurements. So we knew in the measurements, we have the force transducer as well as we're measuring displacement and time. Um, we added our calculations, which were um, the break calculation as well as the, the peak for max force. Um, so now we can add results to our results table. So I'm gonna first start with break here. Um, I'm going to add um, force at break and then displacement at break. Um, I'm also going to now add max force and I'll just do the maximum force of the test. And I can change um, all of the units here if I want. Maybe I want, um, maybe I'm okay with millimeters, but I want the force to be in newtons. Um, I can configure that all right here. I can go back to the test tab and say, yep. Perfect, I added my results to my results table. I can also add some statistics if that's important to me. I'm gonna add mean and standard deviation. Um, and now you can see my results table. I have configured um, my results table to show me the information that's important for my test. So I'm gonna skip results too, so we allow for two different results tables. Um, I'm gonna move now to graph one, um, where I can configure my graph. Um, so for example, some of the things that um, some users like to change is change the number of curves um, for, for tests. So I have um, four curves, um, but I could change that to say five if that's um, important to me. Um, I can also change the units on the graph. Um, so again, maybe maybe for me right now, I, I wanna see this in, in Newtons, um, but I'm okay with millimeters for my displacement. Um, and then when I, I save this method, when any user goes to run a new test with this method, they'll have these updated settings that I'm configuring right now. So again, you can have um, two graphs, um, but most users um, can just use one. Um, so now I'm gonna just skip down to the layout. Um, so the layout is how the workspace is configured. So I like the default layout for the purpose of my test, where I have a graph, I have my results table, and I have my operator input. But we allow for a lot of customization here. I mean, users can really choose um, the workspace that makes sense for them. Um, maybe if a user has the test cam module and using a webcam, they would also like to see the test um, in, in a window here. So you can split the window and add um, test cam. So that's all configurable. Um, so with exports, I'm not gonna go into too much detail here. Um, just know that it's possible to export your raw data um, using export um, this export field if you want to um, export raw, raw data. Um, you can also set some default file settings. So if you know within a method that you always want to, to save your method file information to one central location, 
um, you can set that directory here as well as the file name. Um, there, Blue Hill Universal has a lot of power within exports. Um, it's very flexible and there's a lot of information and I think it's more of an, ad, an advanced section. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip over that. I'm gonna move to workflow really quickly. Um, so workflow includes prompted tests, which is great for uh, helping to guide operators to fill in certain parameters. Um, my method is very basic. So for now, I'm going to not go into too much detail here. Um, but if you wanted to configure a prompted test, that would essentially guide users to um, input certain fields within the software. For my test, I'm okay with having the operators just use the operator inputs. But if I was concerned that my operators are going to forget to enter something like batch number or batch creation date, I can set up a prompted test um, using that workflow section, which essentially becomes in that full guide for, um, for an operator. So that's it, we did it. Um, we just built a basic method from scratch and we went through all of the parameters that um, was necessary for us. So I'm gonna do a save on the, this method. I'm gonna call this um, our um, webinar demo method. And I'm gonna save that. I'm just gonna save it to my desktop and save. So now, um, again, I'm not running any, I, I wasn't going to run any tests here with this. Um, but if I want to run some tests, I, I can do that um, using um, this method directly from this workspace, or I can exit out and then I could select my webinar demo method to run the test. Um, just for simplicity, I'll stay right here and run some tests. So I can enter my um, batch number. I can select a batch creation date. Um, here is where I can have my users um, enter their thickness and width, and I can run a test. Perfect, so now I have um, one test completed. Um, I can run a second test. Um, and maybe I'll run one more. So when we were building the method, there were a few parameters in the method that we talked about that were that are mandatory to complete before starting a test. Um, so measurements was one of them. Um, so these measurements, these are the, the physical measurements that are, are used um, during um, data collection for the test. And same thing with test control. We talked about test control. You need to set the data rate and the test speed. Um, however, calculations, this area is very flexible. So I ran three tests so far, but maybe I realized that, you know what, I realized I need to add modulus. I completely forgot to add that. I can now add a modulus calculation um, to my method. And I could see, oh, wow, there are a lot of different modulus calculations. I'm not sure which one makes sense to me. Um, again, I can go into Bluehill Help. I can search um, for modulus to find what I want to find. I can select modulus and then now I can see um, that I can see the different modulus options. So I, I think I want to see can't let me read about this in a little bit more detail. I can understand what algorithm is used and I have this nice picture that I can use to see um, how the secant modulus um, would actually be calculating my result within Blue Hill. So I know, okay, um, I'm, I'm comfortable using the secant modulus, um, which is going to 
um, calculate until um, two millimeters. Um, so it'll go from uh, zero to two millimeters and determine the slope of, of the line. Um, and now I can go to my workspace and into results, and now I can add modulus to my results table. So you can see, I was able to do that after the test is completed. Um, which really speaks to the flexibility within Bluefield Universal. So although I made my method, I saved it, I actually ran some tests, I can go back and now add more results to my results table because I realized that I maybe forgot something. Um, so things that you can't change after tests are run. Um, you can't change your data rate or your measurements or your test speed because all of those parameters um, are associated with the tests that you already have completed. So you can't go back and, and just go into the method and change those. Um, whereas we are able to add different results to the results table and see that flexibility. So now I can choose if I wanna save. Um, I can save this sample file. Um, I'm going to save this as um, webinar demo we'll save that and now this sample file is saved so now i'm saving my data um, i'm going to go back home um, no i'm not going to change that um, and then i can always start a new test so i'm going to go back to the test tab and here's that method that we just created so i can choose to open that method again or I could also continue my sample. So we ran um, three tests. Maybe I want to open that sample file again because um, I realize I need to run another test. And I can do that by continuing sample. Now my sample file is open again and I can run another test. Perfect, and then I can save, save that. So we created a method from scratch, a basic tension method. Um, we looked at um, creating that method, running a test directly from that method, continuing a sample file. You can also choose in test to start a brand new sample file using that method we just created. Um, I'm going to switch gears a little bit and talk about a new test type within Bluehole Universal, which is a quick test. So I went to test, now I'm prompted to start a new sample file, and I can choose to run a quick test. So within a quick test, there isn't a method. So it allows for, um, well, quick testing. So if you have a test that you want to just understand force at break or peak force or force a displacement at max force, um, you can use quick test. So there's no need to build a method at all. Um, we've really simplified the workflow. You can choose that you want to run a quick test um, there are some basic parameters that an operator or user would have to fill out um, on the screen to the left. So let's just step through these right now. Um, a user has to determine the direction. Um, is it going to be a tension test and the crosshead moves up? Or is this going to be a compression test and the crosshead moves down? I'm going to choose a tension test. I'm going to add my test speed. Um, I can add inputs here or, or notes, um, and then I can choose what do I want to do with um, the data that I generated. Do I want to print a report? Do I want to save a PDF report? Do I want to export the results or do I want to export the raw data? Um, so this is where uh, a user would configure their really simple um, quick test parameters. Um, so just by choosing the direction, and the test speed, or an operator could really start to run their test. 
Um, so some areas that we skipped over with this is we're not focused on data rate. So data rate is just the default, the end of test criteria. That's just the default that we went through in the method. Um, so if all of those parameters work for you and you just want to see a general pull to failure, um, quick test is an excellent um, test type uh, to use. You can see my results table is also fixed. So when we created that method from scratch, everything was completely customizable. So we were able to um, customize our workspace and customize our results. Within Quick Test, um, we made some decisions here um, to focus on the results that our users um, most frequently use. Maybe it's in, in a, a very simple quality control application, or maybe it's in um, research and development where the user um, is using uh, so many different pieces of lab equipment on a daily basis. And now that user just needs to go up to the Instron system and get a peak to failure result. Um, so that all can be done within, within quick tests. Um, you can still customize some things in the layout. Um, we have a little pencil icon to use. And you can see you can do things like change maybe some of the, the graph settings if that's applicable to you. Um, so that's the basics of of Blue Hill Universal, um, creating methods, what are the critical parameters within a method, um, as well as running a quick test. I'm going to switch back here um, just to review. Um, so Blue Hill methods are designed so users can walk through each tab from left to right to build a, an optimized testing protocol. So just like you would read a book is how you can walk through a method to create the method um, that's best for your testing. Um, so at a minimum, users need to configure their measurements, their physical measurements, um, test control. So you have to set things like the test speed um, and the data rate, um, as well as specimen geometry if you're using stress calculations. Everything else can always be reconfigured um, afterwards and then re resaved once you have some test results. And samples. So sample files um, are the files that are created when a user runs tests. So that's when you select that test tab within Bluehole Universal. Um, so sample files can be created from scratch. So new testing, um, that's when you select a method to start a brand new sample file, or they can be continued, which is what we saw um, during the demo when we continued the sample. Um, and then quick tests can be used um, for really basic, simple testing. If for the most part, all the default settings work for you, and you just need to determine, is this a compression test or is this a tension test? And then set the test speed. Um, quick test is an excellent option to get users up and running quickly. Um, and if you saw something when we were going through this demonstration, like when we were on the test screen and how I was able to go back and forth between the test and method, um, if you're thinking that you wouldn't want operators to be able to see that, um, all of this is configurable and you can limit um, access to these tabs using Bluehole Security. Um, within Bluehole Security, that's where users set profiles and can set permissions um, so that maybe a lab manager is able to create the methods and run tests just like I did, but maybe the operators are only able to see the, the test screen. Um, so all of that is configurable with um, the permissions, but that gets into a little bit um, more advanced settings. Um, so one thing that I did just want to mention um, on the Instron systems, um, so Blue Hill um, can be mounted to your system um, with the operator dashboard. We just have two pictures here on the operator dashboard can be mounted on either side. And that does change the format I'm running right now on my computer in landscape. So you saw that my user interface looked a certain way. Um, it's the exact same interface when you're on the operator dashboard, except it's optimized for portrait mode. 
Um, and it's really, it's really great to run in, in portrait mode. It's my preference, um, but I'm just on my laptop now. So what you saw was me um, in um, an optimized view for um, landscape. Um, so I, I hope that um, answered a lot of the questions folks had or was a good overview um, of um, the basics of Google Universal and, and building a method um, and running a test. And so now we'll open it up for some Q&A. All right, thank you, Elaine. Um, and hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Dan Caesar, at, at Nick, as Nick had alluded to. Um, and a good amount of questions have, have uh, been asked in the last 45 minutes. Uh, and then also leading up to today's webinar during the registration process. So a lot of those questions um, that were entered at registration were covered in the slides that we just went through. Um, so for those, I'll consider those answered, but now I will address five or 10 questions or so as time permits uh, that weren't covered and that are relevant to today's webinar. Um, and I will try to uh, demonstrate this within Blue Hill Universal if the question permits uh, permits that. So we'll see as they as they come in. So let me share my screen. Okay. So let's get this started. So first question. Um, you mentioned that most users do not need to change the data rate default in a method. How do I know if I need to change my data rate? So the answer to this is that you'll generally need to increase the data rate if you're collecting too few data points. And this can occur during very fast tests. And you may notice that maybe a particular result has a, uh, a high variation, um, or maybe that the calculation is actually not even being made at all, and you might just see a dash through uh, in the results table. But a quick way to check how many data points you are capturing during the test is, is to graph them. So after you have run a test, you can actually edit the properties of a graph to show each data point. So to do this, um, we can look at my screen on graph one. I'm looking at specimen number four, and I don't see any data points. So this is just a, uh, a yield calculation that's being indicated. But Right now, I just see a clean line. So if I wanna see data points, I can go into the graphs properties and I can go to advanced and I can select the plot that I'm concerned with, which right now is plot one because I'm only graphing a single specimen at a time. And you can see that there's different options and you can change the symbol, which is right now to at none, you can change it to dot or box or cross. So if I choose dot, and I close back out, then now you can see that there are these uh, pink dots that represent the each data point that was captured. So for this particular sample that was tested, uh, the data rate is potentially sufficient. And in my opinion, it's probably too low, especially during this linear region, you can see that there might only be 25 data points. So that's definitely pretty low, especially for focusing on modulus, um, which is happening really in the very beginning of the test, you only have a few points. So in this case, I would recommend uh, going into your data uh, data rate section of the method and, and bumping that up. So next, next question, um, is there a way in Blue Hill to prevent an operator from running a test unless the load cell is calibrated? So the answer to this is that yes, you are able to set up transducer checks within the software. So this feature allows you to set a periodic calibration of a load cell. So essentially what this will do is that if the load cell has not been calibrated in that set time period, then the operator will not be able to run a test and they'll actually will receive a, a message that uh, will tell them to recalibrate the load cell prior to running a test. Um, and this is going to be found in your system details in the upper right of Blue Hill Universal. And this is where you see all of your transducers. So if you go to the force transducer setting that you can then 
specify checks which one of them is the periodic calibration and you can set this time interval here. Okay, next question. Uh, there are so many calculation options in Blue Hill. Is there a manual that explains what all the calculations are? So Blue Hill does not come with a manual, but it actually comes with something that's a lot more helpful, which is a, a, sort, a searchable help file. Um, it's embedded within the software. It also comes uh, in the install package that you can view it outside of the software. But generally, we recommend to use it within the software itself, which it's denoted as this question mark. And it, it contains very detailed explanations of, of not only setting up a method, but as the question asked, um, of, each cal uh, of each calculation, going through what the necessary parameters are. Um, it goes through the actual algorithm that the parameters are being used for. Um, and a lot of them also have animations to visu visually show how that algorithm is functioning. So if you're trying to decide between two different types of ca uh, modulus calculations or break calculations, because there are quite a few to choose from, then that's a good place to see um, the differences between them. So if I go in, press the question mark that you can go ahead and you can search through the entire database. But the other cool thing to note is that wherever you are within Blue Hill, when you press the question mark, that it automatically sends you to the, the place that it thinks you're, you're searching for. So right now I'm in the test workspace, so I press the question mark and it popped up uh, within the test workspace field. All right, next question. Um, can we get a copy to use on a no equipment computer for data analysis and method creation? And the answer to this is, is yes, we do offer a, an offline version of Blue Hill Universal to allow users to do just that, to create methods and to perform data analysis at your desk um, away from the Instron frame. So, Basically, what you would need to decide is whether or not you just need a single license or if you would want unlimited licenses, depending on how many users that you expect to um, need to use Blue Hill away from the system. Our next question is, how do you change the speed for each of the specimens? So. There's a couple of different ways you can do this depending on how you set up your method. So as Elaine had mentioned, there's a workflow feature uh, where you're actually setting up a prompted test for your operator. And within that prompted test, um, I can show, let's see if I can do it in, within this method. So if I go to workflow and I say I want to run as a prompted test, that there's all these areas of the test where your operator is going to be queued to do something or to enter information. So one of them is prompt before a test. So that's gonna be indicated on this tile. And if you want to change the test rate, that one of the options under test is actually the rate of the test. So that means that when the person is, if when your operator is running a test and you enter this before test screen, which happens before every specimen that you're running, one of the parameters is going to be rate, and that's how they can enter in that specific value. Um, another, another way that this can be entered, so if I get out of workflow and I go back to my test tab, that Elaine had reviewed different operator inputs. So if you're not using prompted test, that you can, again, add operator input as rate one. So the reason why you see it here at, under rate one, right now it's grayed out because test four has already been run. If I go to test specimen five, it allows me to enter whatever rate I choose. Um, but the only reason why this is here is because when I was setting up this method, in my workspace under operator inputs, I had selected again 
the test rate one. Um, so this forces the, or allows the operator to type in a specific value. You can have more advanced uh, integrations into the software that rather than having the operator enter an actual value, um, which there could be errors associated to that if they type in the wrong number. Um, you can, rather than having this, you can have a list box where you can have someone choose from a list of different values. And you can even take it a step further. And I think one of the questions that came in during our session was um, how you can link values. And that is something that you can do here. You can actually say, okay, I have this sample type A, sample type B, sample type C. And for sample type A, I want to run at 25 millimeters a minute for B, 50, and for C, 75. And that you can create that link so that your operators are not relied upon to either select the rate or type in the rate. They just select, I know I'm running a sample type A and that Blue Hill will do all the work for them. Um, so that is a little bit more of a sophisticated use of Blue Hill that a lot of our users use. Um, I'm not gonna go through setting that up right now. I, I believe that our YouTube page actually goes through setting up linked values with choice inputs. So I would recommend viewing that if, if you are curious how that is done. Um, our next question is, how do you configure ex export formats and path directories for outputs? Again, Elaine had touched on this briefly, but if I go back into my, my method tab, that we have this exports section, and this is where everything exports is done. Um, so specifically, she had mentioned you can set up a default folder. So this is something either locally on your Instron computer or a network location that you can set um, sample files and output files to, to get sent to. Um, and the export formats, if you look at our export one or export two, that you see all the details for the export type, whether it's CSV, um, whether it's ASCII or any encoding type, um, you have the ability to actually make this a, a custom format. So beyond just this default CSV, you can specify custom where you're actually changing how the export file appears when the export is made. So whether it's uh, colon separated, comma separated, space oriented, um, that you can customize it to however your system requires. So if you're using some sort of data statistical analysis system that instead of a CSV file requires some sort of specifically formatted text file, then this is where you'd play around uh, with that format to, to suit your needs. Um, and it is, there was a question um, about, can I see a visual representation of how this is going to look and what changes will be made if I make changes to one or two? That here on the right-hand side, you'll see that there is a preview. So it's giving you just a lowdown of what uh, you should anticipate from that, that export file. So another, another question is how do you perform cyclic testing? So this was very briefly touched on by Elaine and the, the short answer to it is that to perform cyclic testing, you need our optional module that is called Test Profiler. And that's where you get those two additional test types, um, compression and tension test profiler methods that allow you to create custom test control sequences or what we call profiles uh, with, a, with a nice, simple, user-friendly interface. So any sort of complex cyclic testing, uh, it, you need test profiler. Um, so if that's something that you require, just make sure to reach out to your sales engineer to have that package added to your Blue Hill Universal order. Um, another question, can data be transferred from Blue Hill Universal 
to our lab advantage software, which is soon to be rolled out to all of our labs. So to answer this question, we really just need to know exactly what file format your lab advantage software is anticipating. So what it requires, like I just had gone through Blue Hill results and data, they can be exported to specific locations and they can be exported in different file formats. So depending on what your internal system requires, once we know that, we can then confirm if Blue Hill can export to that. Um, so generally that is sufficient for customers. If there's some uh, database access export uh, situation where our standard Blue Hill is not capable, we do have um, a, a software group that will uh, design custom versions of Blue Hill to make that connection if that's imperative to, to your Instron system. And we've certainly done that for many customers in the past. Um, so I think that that uh, we're basically wrapping up on time. So I think that was going to be that was going to be our last question. Um, so I apologize to anyone whose questions weren't answered today live, um, but I'll make sure to reach out to those individuals uh, if the question was definitely relevant to this this topic. Um, so thank you for your time and attention. And with that, Nick, can you close out for us? Yeah. Thanks, Dan. So yeah, like Dan said, that's going to do it for today. I just want to leave on a couple quick notes. Today's recording will be available on our YouTube channel in just a short while. And then each of you will also be sent a link to that video um, as soon as it's available. And uh, one other thing, we're also excited to announce that next month, <coughs> excuse me, between August 24th and the 27th, we're going to be hosting the Instron Biomedical Testing Open House. It's going to be a live virtual event this year. Um, so this is where you're going to hear from materials testing experts on a wide range of biomedical testing topics. We're very excited for it. You can find a full list of available sessions and, um, and sign up now on instron.com. So with that said, I just want to thank Elaine for presenting today. Dan, thanks for mu so much for uh, helping out with those questions. Lots of good ones came in. And thank you all for attending. We really appreciate your time. Um, stay healthy, everyone. We hope to see you again next time.